friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Thurston and I'm here to help new homeowners like you achieve your design dreams on a budget. In today's video, we're going to go through 10 more interior design trends that I would love to say bye 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 to forever. Seriously, it's time to eliminate these outdated decor disasters and start planning the home of your dreams. Let's get into it. Back in January, I made a video on interior design trends that I would love to see go in 2021. And it's clear that you all are here for that kind of content. And how could I disappoint you? And of course, I have more opinions on the matter, so I thought I might go ahead and share 10 more. Remember to share your thoughts in the comments down below. You never know, maybe you can change my mind. And we can also brainstorm together what could we replace these things with to make our homes feel more modern, fresh, and contemporary. Decor trend, I'd love to say bye 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 to tile countertops. Tile countertops first came on the scene in the 1970s and grew in popularity in the 1980s due to the accessibility of affordable tile options in every color, sheen, size, pattern imaginable. I have great memories of going to tile shops with my family as a kid. Unfortunately, that was 30 years ago and it might be time for an update. A lot of tile countertops can look old and outdated because grout can look dirty. It's not often sanitary. It can hang on to bacteria. Ever since since that time in the 90s, early 2000s, you've seen a huge trend shifting toward solid surface stones and faux stone options. There's a lot of affordable, friendly options that you can use that are fairly innocuous, neutral colors, easy to clean, won't hold on to bacteria. You don't have to go for an extreme veined marble. I know some people are really resistant to that trend right now. You can always go for something simple, white, neutral tones. A natural stone is always gonna look classic and and won't feel dated like ceramic tile. I should put in the caveat here that if you're restoring an older home and you want to stay true to some of the original pieces, you might preserve, say, a original tile floor or something that's in your shower. Even tile going up the walls in a bathroom can be really, really pleasing and can feel really clean and modern. But again, tile countertops just aren't going to bridge that gap. Now, I know a lot of people are going into this like TikTok trend of tiling furniture. I'm not a huge fan of that either but if you are, more power to you. Show me a picture in the comments below. I'd love to see your DIYs with tile. Nothing makes a space look more dated than wood paneling. It feels ancient at this point. Wood paneling first started trending back in the 1700s. In the United States during the colonial period, this simple design provided durability and insulation. Wood panels rose to popularity yet again in the mid 20th century, when solid wood, plywood, and even wood veneer panels became common elements in home decor. It came back yet again in the 2010s in the form of shiplap when Chip and Joanna Gaines popularized this white whitewash version of wood paneling. Like anything that signifies a bygone era or literally every modern farmhouse pin on Pinterest can be seen as old fashioned and I'll say it a little basic. Once something feels too trendy, it might be time to think outside the box. There are so many other different ways of creating visual interest on your walls through wood moldings, board and batten, interesting wallpaper, wall coverings and finishes, fabric wall coverings. Really, really, really tired of seeing this ship lap trend, my friends. Next up, futons. The Japanese invented and perfected the original futon mattress for sleeping, and it became popular in the United States in the 1970s, traditionally laid on top of a tatami mat. In 1982, Cambridge woodworker William Brower invented the futon bed, what we typically think of when we think of futons today. And that's also the year I was born. So in 1982 brought us the futon and me. I'm not sure what that says about me. Brower spent time in Japan, fell in love with Japanese interior design, who wouldn't, and created this iconic piece of furniture. If you're a millennial like myself, you couldn't escape the futon throughout your childhood, college years, and into your early 20s. Literally every guy in college had one, and they could be a little ripe 
from time to time. Maybe need to pull that thing out and, you know, just like put it in the washer every now and again. Just like a hot tip if you want to hang on to your futon. It's outdated because although they take up less space, although they can be great in a small apartment, affordable futon options are largely unattractive and uncomfortable. There are so many alternatives like sofa beds, Murphy beds, stowable air mattresses that are at regular mattress height that can fill this need without being an eyesore. Try investing your money in a comfortable sofa and get an air mattress, something that's high quality that you can use for a long time. When I lived in a studio apartment, that's what I did. It made it very easy to have guests when I needed to. Think of how often you need a second bed space. Probably not as often as you think. And if you're thinking about putting a futon in a children's bedroom, I would recommend one of those loft style beds where you can put a desk and some, you know, kind of hanging out furniture underneath it that can double the living space without being an eyesore. Unpopular opinion alert, terrazzo. This might be controversial. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I definitely want to acknowledge that it fits very well into certain design aesthetics, but... Oh, this trend, it's really gotten crazy. Terrazzo first came on the scene in the 1930s and remained a popular design choice through the 1970s. It's come back hard just in the last few years, and I've seen it just about everywhere, all over Pinterest and social media. It is important to note that Terrazzo never really went out of style in places like Palm Springs, where mid-century design, colorful design is king. And if you're a mid-century design lover and you wanna go all in on this trend, Terrazzo is a really quick way to get you there. Although I was initially attracted to this trend when it resurfaced a few years ago, I've been shocked at how quickly this one feels outdated. Now designers tend to favor more natural, timeless stones like granite and marble. If you're gonna go ahead and go for the terrazzo, just rein it in a little bit on the crazy colors, especially if you don't want to hate it in six months. Now for one of my personal, most ugh, cringy design things that ugh, needs to go, word art. Word art started coming onto the scene after the last recession in 2009. Most people couldn't afford original art to decorate their spaces, but they still wanted that homey and personalized feeling. So they turned to affordable options from discount retailers and DIY projects. Joanna Gaines fueled popularity on this trend yet again by showcasing a lot of custom word art pieces throughout her television series, Fixer Upper. You might remember that she had a lot of custom wood pieces with words designed, different metal pieces designed that became sort of iconic accessory pieces on the show. I find it all to be a bit cringy. It's outdated because I don't know why we need our homes to tell us what to do and feel and think while we're walking around through them. And I don't understand why our utilitarian objects need to tell us what their uses are. Isn't that kind of obvious? Many people don't consider word art art at all just a placeholder for something more meaningful. So if you've been filling your home with word art, no shade, I understand it's hard to find things on a budget. I really would encourage you to buy some digital prints from Etsy until you can afford some real art from someone. And Etsy is a great source for original artists too, looking for pieces that fit into your design aesthetic, the exact color and style that you're looking for. You can find just about anything there. Another place to look around for artists that inspire you is Instagram and other social media channels channels. I find so many different artists there just through searches. And once I find one, I'm connected to some others that they like. And then it kind of gets me on the bunny rabbit hole spiral of finding cool things on Etsy all night. And that's not a bad rabbit hole to get lost into. The next trend I'd love to just say bye 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 to is Tuscan kitchens. Tuscan kitchens became extremely popular from about 2005 until about 2010 with dominant colors like dark red, chocolate brown, golden beige, and metal finishings like wrought iron, oil rubbed bronze, travertine floors, exposed dark colored brick, ornately carved, oversized, overstuffed furniture. This generally was the McMansion vibe of choice in the early 2000s. It's outdated because it feels so heavy and dark. It feels very Real Housewives of New Jersey. I always wonder what Real Housewives of New Jersey think of that show. I'm sure they eye roll that hard. No shade if you live in New Jersey. I bet you have way better style than these kitchens. 
If you love Tuscan, you can do it in the modern era just by pulling out some of these bold, dark colors. There's a lot to love about Tuscan. It connects to Italy, it connects to your Italian roots if that affects you, your feelings maybe if you've gone to visit there and it really inspired you. I don't want you to completely bulldoze your Italian Tuscan kitchen. I'm just thinking, how could you make it feel fresh for 2021? Layer in a little bit of white, a little bit of lighter beige, some brighter neutral tones, to kind of clarify and open up the space. Focus on preserving all that beautiful and ornate stonework. That stuff is timeless. Clear some of the visual clutter by selecting simpler accessories and furniture pieces scaled appropriately for your space. Another design trend I am eager to never see ever again, wallpaper borders. Wallpaper border was originally popularized in the 1700s as a way to alter a room's visual proportions. In the late 19th century, it became popular to divide walls by installing wallpaper border at chair rail height and again a few inches from the ceiling and then painting the distance between the two borders. Some were continuous scenes, sometimes related to history or lore. Others were repeating patterns. We saw this come back again in the early 80s and through the 1990s. If you've still got this in your home, my friends, it's time for a refresh. It's outdated because there are so many alternatives to add visual interest to your walls and make your home feel much more contemporary and upscale. Try wainscoting or crown molding or chair rail molding or French style molding. You also have board and batten, which has become very popular again. Paint treatments, wall texture. There's so many different options. It's time to move beyond this tired, dusty old border, especially if it has pastel animals, baby pastel animals. Oh heavens, it may be time for an intervention if you have that in your house. Wallpaper border usually comes off a lot easier than you might think, and it can make a huge difference to get rid of that. Another design trend that I absolutely cannot stand, vertical blinds. Now I know that they have function. I understand that they are so convenient. They move the same direction as your sliding glass door, but oh heavens, they are not cute. Edward and Frederick Bob first invented vertical blinds in 1950. They started their own business and patented their vertical blind design in 1960. Ever since then, they've grown in popularity and have really never gone away. They are pretty much in every single apartment and cheap hotel room across the United States. Vertical blinds have remained a popular choice for large windows and sliding glass doors due to their affordability and simple functionality. The fact that they roll the same way as your sliding glass door makes functional sense, but ugh, oh dear. They're outdated, especially if we're talking about the white or off-white or yellowing plastic kind. Is that really the feeling that you want in your home? Is that your home rising up to meet you? And oh no, I personally can't stand vertical blinds. And it's one of the first things that I take down every time I move into a new rental. They always seem to fall off the track. They always seem to get stuck when you're pulling them over. That little chain gets stuck so you can let a bit, a little bit of light in. They get all tangled up somehow. I bang into them. It creates a big loud noise. It scares the dog. My best design tip. Just hang curtains and call it a day. They move the same way as your sliding glass door and arguably a lot more attractive. Have you ever painted your walls with anything other than a paintbrush? Have you ever painted your walls with a sponge? Sponge painted walls first started trending back in the 1980s and gained massive appeal that continued well into the 1990s. This expanded to rag painting techniques and other offshoots of the trend, designed to add faux texture to walls on a budget. It's outdated because it feels a little bit like trading spaces back in the 90s, not in a good way. It feels like every little girl's bedroom in the 1990s unless you had Laura Ashley wallpaper, of course. If you still have sponge painted walls or sponge painted anything in your home, give it a fresh coat of paint. Trust me, it'll feel great. Another design trend I am so tired of, glass blocks. Glass blocks first started trending back in the 1930s with the advent of factories that had the capacity for mass production. They became trendy again in the 1980s alongside pastel colors and feathered bangs. We were all victims of this time. They're outdated because they're unattractive, unnecessary, 
and more expensive than regular windows. Although they let in a little light, they do not let you see out and don't create the open feeling that a regular window provides. Some architects have argued that glass blocks are commonly used to hide poorly designed walkways and corners in a home. It's best to leave this design style in the past. If you have glass blocks or other some such version, it might be time to replace that with a regular window. Think about how wildly different a room might feel if you took away a bunch of small glass blocks letting in a little bit of light and put in a big picture window letting in floods of light into a space. You can hang high curtains to really elevate and add visual interest if there's no architectural elements. A big window is always a good choice and glass blocks, ugh, they're a little bit tired. I know replacing glass blocks and installing a regular window is a costly endeavor, but I would argue that it's worth saving your money for, and it would only improve the property value of your home. It's so fun to learn about interior design trends, their origins, and how they continue to resurface over and over again over time. Like most things, when interior design becomes popular, it runs the risk of becoming trendy, and then it's a quick trip to outdated. I hope this video inspired you to stop thinking about changing your home decor and start planning the changes that are gonna make your space rise up to meet you when you walk through the door. There's so much you can do with a little inspiration and creativity. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments below. For 10 easy ways to make your home look expensive on a budget, click this video right here. You might also enjoy the high-end home decor dupes that I was able to source in this video down here. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends. It's a beautiful day to explore some interior design.